Good morning. Happy Friday. Woo woo. I'm so excited. Welcome to all of you. If you've made it through the week, congratulations. It's been a chaotic week here in the Gallagher Robinson household. And I hope you are healthy and well. Today, I'm very excited. It is our live Q&A Friday where I answer all of your common health and wellness related questions. A lot of times the questions that are asked are often relatable to many of you tuning in. This is a live show and also many of you are going to be watching on the replay. So I welcome for any of you joining live, uh, there will be at the halfway point, I'll ask that you answer, you ask me questions then. So save your questions until that, that point in the live show. For all of you joining us and watching on the replay, please hit the like, subscribe button and follow me on Instagram TV. I uh, post a lot of information even on the weekends. I go live Monday through Saturday and Sundays are um, edited video days on YouTube. So I'm excited to go over a whole bunch of news. And then I have a ton of questions I came in through on Instagram and YouTube that we will dig into. And uh, before we kick off, I want to mention that this today is um, I think the last and final day where you can sign up uh, currently to watch this free nine part docu series. This last one, uh, which is finding your answers to cancer. Oh my gosh, it's seriously, I think it was the best episode. So I'm going to rewatch it today and I have a link down below. Um, stay tuned for additional details uh, if they come out with um, another portion of the series. So I'll have more information but definitely don't wait and don't delay because this is such a great series and it's quite effective for a lot of people. We talk about food, they interview really powerful um, powerhouses in functional medicine like Joel Furman and um, just some amazing individuals as well as one of our own who is suffering from cancer. So um, I think it's very impactful. So I know a lot of you have been watching it. Now also I do want to encourage any of you who traditionally shop, shop any uh, supplements are online, uh, like Amazon, or if you're purchasing, you know, anything from herbals to homeopathics, if you love my channel and want to support us, um, I offer everybody through my online full script store, 10% off discount. So that is an excellent way. If you want to support our channel, um, that you automatically get 10% off when you check out and it is free shipping after $50. But so usually you buy two things and that's about $50 depending on if you buy homeopathics are way less expensive than some of our supplements, but you know how that is. So I appreciate that support. Also want to encourage all of you to namaste six feet away. I'm rocking my social distancing shirt. I support Etsy uh, small business owners and I have links to them. They're awesome. So let's kick off with our news. Shall we? The world is almost at 21 million cases tomorrow. I'd say tomorrow, I think is maybe even tonight, who knows, I, I, you know, we're still posting, we're still waiting on the US <laughs> for the posting of the cases, but um, the way it's charting, we'll probably hit 21 million cases later on this evening, uh, worldwide, and the US is at 5.34 million cases. Uh, we had another bad day for fatalities. We had almost 1300 people, 1300 US citizens die of COVID yesterday alone. Uh, so now we have a total of 169,449 fatalities from COVID. And there's a new projection that we will hit 200,000 by September 1st if things don't change. Part of the recalibration and calculation has to do with schools reopening. And we'll talk a lot about that. Um, Gabriel is upstairs doing his virtual learning. <laughs> what a mess. But it's actually a lot better <laughs> than last year. But still, there some children don't and parents don't have that option. I do want to highlight that our fatalities currently, um, those are from four to eight weeks ago, infections and hospitalizations from four to eight weeks ago. So there's a lag time from high case numbers, high positive tests. There's a certain percentage of folks we know will go into the severity, moderate severity uh, range of COVID. They'll be hospitalized, they'll need oxygen, they'll need all sorts of complementary services or um, uh, therapies due to the overwhelming systemic inflammatory state. And that is quite unpredictable. We know some folks show low vitamin D levels, that's synonymous with moderate to severe COVID, but there are also folks that have no underlying health concerns. And I say that in quotes because there are a lot of folks that are walking around 
unaware that their body is not optimized, like prediabetes and other um, inflammatory disorders that often are not regularly assessed in the medical world. So I want to put that out there. Okay, so just a few highlights of the states. Um, California and Florida both had really high um, uh, positive cases, but most importantly, they had high fatality. So California logged 160 uh, Californians died of COVID yesterday and Florida had uh, 149 folks die. Those are down from uh, a few days ago, but they're still high. Texas is still hovering um, high. They posted 6,700 new cases and 250, 255 fatalities. Most alarming is Illinois. Illinois had 233 fatalities yesterday from COVID. Um, and I have to go back to three, four weeks ago. I don't remember there being an overwhelming quantity, but I don't know what all is going on there in terms of why yesterday was such a bad day. Um, I do want to make a note that uh, we still have a testing shortage here in the U.S. We have a, a situation where we don't have enough uh, tests. We don't have enough materials. Um, and then also on top of that, uh, we have uh, some access points that's, that have closed We've seen some governors close down some of the rural and community-based centers that are targeting some of those most hit and most at risk for severe, moderate and severe COVID, i.e. our people of color, our communities of color, uh, we're seeing a decrease in the testing uh, access. So this is something we need to press for more access. We need to get on, get on board with getting all of the materials from the swabs to the plastic little jars that might contain the swabs or saliva. Um, it just is quite overwhelming and it's still part of the reason why we just don't have a handle on community spread. I do want to make a note, uh, internationally, New Zealand, um, you know, I highlighted earlier in the week, they celebrated 100 days of zero tests. And then like the day after they went into lockdown because they had three uh, cases, that's now moved to 13 in Auckland. Um, they are trying to identify what the source is of the outbreak. Um, they do know that there was a breach at a quarantine facility. So when folks come in to uh, the country and they have some travel arrangements, they do a quarantine, they quarantine in these facilities. Well, somebody broke out of that um, and infected people in Auckland. They've also genetically identified the strain. So they can identify <laughs> where did this come from? And it either came from Australia or Britain. And that is the genetic strain that they've identified in those, those 13 cases. Um, that is really fascinating to me as, as far as like the, just the amount of the small, I mean, it, for New Zealand, they're literally freaking out. There's quarantines, cities on lockdown, whole entire country is working from home and schooling at home. But what they've been able to do, because it's such a small quantity, they can really get pinpointed. They will have an identity of where it came from. And they will do contract tracing and know what airline, who it was, you know, all those details. So um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on stateside. So Kentucky, the governor demanded that he wants all the schools, school districts to follow his executive order of reopening even though Kentucky is in a growth phase. Um, Florida governor, you know, Florida, D-U-H, I grew up there so I can, you know, call them Floridas. <laughs> There's a certain segment of the population where you just wonder like, oh my gosh, we were always on cops, you know, crazy stories of people giving alligators beer. I mean, it's just insane. Well, it continues on with the governor. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm imagining, I'm hoping, I, I can't confirm this, but I'm hoping he took a uh, county uh, school district, the quote out of context. But this is what he said yesterday. He said, he basically said <clears throat> that this one county uh, told him that she, it's a female, she equates the kids going into school to the special forces that went in and um, took out bin Laden, Osama bin Laden. Um, you know, as a parent, that's just heart disheartening and just outrageous because children are not trained like special forces. They're not equipped with safety gear and they don't volunteer to be the experimental force. And so it's just one of those statements where like, oh my gosh. So I have to highlight that. 
Um, really, I do hope that he took what she said to him out of context. She might have been saying it like they aren't special forces. So I don't know. But at any rate, Florida, um, the teachers are um, suing the governor. Um, and we're going to see what happens. But school is, I mean, it's kicked off to start next week and the week after. Okay, so the CDC, uh, the director of the CDC made uh, a statement yesterday. I want to read what he said. Uh, he said, for your country right now and for the war that we're in against COVID, I'm asking you to do four simple things. Wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and be smart about crowds. He said, I'm not asking some of America do, to do it. We've got to, we all got to do it. He said, got to G-O-T-T-A. And that if they don't follow those four things and the suggested recommended guidelines, we will have the worst fall from a public health perspective that we've ever had. Oh, are you looking for the heart thing? No, they're drawing faces. Oh, they're drawing faces? Okay. Yeah. Brian's grabbing printer paper. Okay, so they're drawing faces. Okay. I'll have to equip Gabriel with some paper up there. Okay. Uh, so that is what he said. Um, if you're curious about a really kind of like Q&A style uh, Q&A, uh, Matthew McConaughey, who I absolutely adore as an actor, I think he's really funny. He's done bingo during COVID times with these folks in Texas nursing homes. Um, he uh, interviewed on Instagram, uh, he interviewed Dr. Fauci. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you got a little rapper. He wants to say hi to everybody. Daisy wants to come say hi. Here, come here. Here. Oh, Daisy, come here. Come here. Come here. She says hi to everybody. Say hi, Daisy. Oh, she's a good girl. She was sleeping earlier. Were you sleeping? Okay. So if you're curious about the Dr. Fauci and Matthew, Matthew McConaughey interview, it's on Instagram and it's actually really great. He asked him, it's just like a, a deluge of questions. And one of the things he actually asked was, does, is it true? Does sunlight kill COVID? And he said, yes, it is true. Um, but there's obviously some caveats to that. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, I love you. I love you so much. Um, okay. So now I do want to highlight um, a whole bit. Oh, here comes Mina. Sometimes we get a little jealous for some love. Hi, puppy girl. Okay. So I do want to highlight a whole bunch of info that I have here. So let's talk about the big one. Um, yesterday, there was a uh, statement that was, that was made about uh, how China had identified some frozen chicken wings that were imported from Brazil that tested positive for COVID-19. And this means that frozen, now I, and I say this is one of those things, it might be isolated, we don't know yet, but um, there is evidence that uh, COVID has been found on imported frozen chicken wings um, also frozen Ecuadorian shrimp, uh, and these are all imported. So the third largest poultry and pork exporter is where the chicken came from, from Brazil shipped to China. They, you know, Brazil is a major outbreak. And so it's possible that that is part of um, the challenge with the food packing food industry. And um, it is one of those things where I've had you guys ask, you know, does it survive in cold? Does it survive in freezing temperatures? And I, I, I haven't seen anything that says yes or no. Here we go. We've got a situation. Um, and there is a statement that was made that um, the virus, you know, viruses globally can survive up to two years of temperatures of minus 20 degrees Celsius. Um, but science, scientists and officials say there is no strong evidence, strong evidence, right? We don't have it yet. Um, that coronavirus can spread via frozen food. Now, on the flip side, we do know that this virus will die at 132, 132 degrees uh, when it's heated up. So one of those things is, okay, if you're making chicken and you put it in your oven at 325 or 350 for 20 minutes, you're going to kill the virus. But it's that handling of it. Now, there's other viruses and other bacteria that we know like salmonella, if you're handling frozen chicken or not frozen, but you know, thought out raw meat. Um, so it's just one of these things, be smart with your meat production. I think it is a good measure to wear gloves. You know, I, I, I don't, we don't do a lot of meat in my family because I, I was always horrified when my mom, my mom would buy a chicken and she'd be like, 
go into town on it when I was little. And I was always like a tree hugger, even as a little girl. And I just don't prep meat um, for it smells, you know, it, it's, I, I don't like it. It's not my choice. Um, and that's everybody's individual lifestyle. But I will say when and I do, I'm very cognizant, like I don't touch the meat, I use tongs, I use gloves. So this is a good kind of, uh, because we don't know enough, we're going to learn more. It's not a bad idea to just grab some, you know, disposable vinyl, or, you know, I'm not a big fan of latex, but, you know, vinyl gloves and use those if you're going to be handling meat. But just know that uh, we are seeing some evidence right now. This might be totally isolated. I don't know. But I tell you what, it's the buzz of the industry right now. Everybody is freaking out. I do want to also highlight um, some things. There has been in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, there is a research letter that posted characteristics and outcomes of, of uh, COVID-19 patients during the initial peak and resurgence in Houston. And this is really fascinating for all of you in Houston. We have a lot of, uh, we actually have some family in Houston, a lot of friends. This is uh, kind of the acceleration in the beginning of Houston. And then it dips as there are um, some stay at home orders. And then literally just a little gap. And then we start reopening and you see these reopening measures be, oops, sorry, Instagram. You see these reopening measures are the core component when it comes to why things got so bad in Houston. And so um, it also talks about, you know, the patients uh, in ICU, the use of um, remdesivir um, and some of the other therapeutics that they're looking at. And I will say, you know, the therapeutics do not include, um, there's no sort of communication about the hydroxychloroquine. So just FYI on that. Um, so that is very interesting. The other thing that's very fascinating here is that um, the CDC posted um, some new information about, let me see my puppy dog's tail. Hey, Nina, they've all come in here. <laughs> um, the, the CDC has posted their morbidity mortality weekly report, and this is focused on mental health, substance abuse, and suicidal ide ideation during COVID-19. And they talk about an increase in depression and an increase in drinking. Um, I've highlighted that a little bit, you know, kind of the, the procedure, not procedures, but the kind of ways people deal with stress. Some people choose unhealthy practices and some folks just have a tendency towards alcohol if they have alcoholism. Um, I do know that, you know, I've reported alcohol sales are up by like 180%. So there's definitely, you know, correlation to that alcohol sales with alcohol consumption. Uh, and they talk about um, some of the folks that are hit with mental or behavioral health. Some of the folks that had symptoms uh, were in were essential workers um, and unpaid caregivers for adults. So family, like if you're taking care of a, an adult family member, and also those who've reported treatment for already diagnosed anxiety, depression, and or PTSD, that the, the COVID time, you know, quarantine, lockdown, just the stress, economic work, everything, health as well, it's exacerbated some already existing mental health and behavioral um, imbalances. And they also um, identify that um, Hispanic respondents, so people in this study, they respond, reported higher prevalences of symptoms of anxiety disorder or depressive disorder um, and an increased substance use and possible suicidal thoughts. Um, and that's what su suicidal ideation, that's you know, the thoughts of, of committing suicide. There are a lot of hotlines. I'll make sure on the replay, I post numbers. If you are feeling, if you're watching this and you're feeling desperate um, and, and, and isolated in such a way that you're having thoughts of taking your life, one, please don't. You're so much more valuable than you even realize to your friends and family members. And a lot of times you don't always see that when you're in this but there are numbers and resources to help you. So you're not alone. And our community here is sending you lots of love if you feel that way. Um, if you do experience anxiety, I hope you'll watch my video from yesterday. And it's kind of kind of funny the way it works. I was really quickly doing things and I, I didn't notice that some of the spell checking um, 
labeled the Vegas nerd, V-A-G-U-S, as V-E-G-A-S. And so I posted it to like LinkedIn and people were like, yeah, my, my nerves are ready to play blackjack. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But do check out that. I share five DIY ways for you to lower anxiety by invigorating and stimulating your vagus nerve. If you didn't watch that for any of you, please do. It's quite impactful. Um, but this is really critical. And, and I think what we need to do is if you have family and friends who are taking care of you know, adult children who maybe have disabilities, you know, we have a, a, a community too that's really poorly serviced during COVID um, that have mental um, uh, deficits where we have folks that maybe they were going to, you know, um, adult programs that cater to them um, as adults and now those are, are lacking. So I definitely do want to, Daisy, sorry, you guys, Daisy's cleaning herself. Um, one of the things that I really want to encourage you is to check in with those folks that are taking care of family members. You know, just the stats here from the CDC report is telling us they're, they need some help and they need connectivity and they, they're going to need some lifelines. Um, that's really, really critical. Okay, so the, uh, I think this is the last and final thing I want to highlight for you all today is, let me just get this out of the way. Um, this really fascinating report that came out and it came out in eClinical Medicine. And um, this is really, really very interesting. It actually looks at a comparison of the coronavirus in Wuhan and then the coronavirus as it kicked off in the US and Seattle. And what it does is it identifies the ratio of coronavirus positive swabs to flu positive swabs and compared it in Washington state and China, uh, their surveillance data of flu cases. And what they have identified is how many of these people who, uh, who maybe didn't test, they had flu like symptoms, they got tested for flu, but didn't have flu, you know, flu. They identified that there could have been more than 12,000 undetected, but symptomatic cases in Wuhan by the time the city locked down in January 23rd. So those folks that were sick, they went into their clinics, the doctor said, you've got the flu, unbeknownst to you know them, there, there's this growing pandemic, it's out of control already, but they swabbed them for flu and um, they, they test negative for flu, but they're sick. Um, so they did that, they, test, they looked at Wuhan, and then they also did an assessment of Seattle and in the meantime, it says, by the time Seattle schools closed on March 9th, there were likely more than 9,000 undetected cases. A third of the undetected were children. So they've identified that. Um, so they also concluded that there were two undetected coronaviruses in Wuhan for every three cases of flu in adults. So that is interesting. Two of three, you know, two... So three, two people, and let me, let me detail this. Three people who go in, in Wuhan, test for flu. For every three, there's two of, of those folks who actually have COVID. And they've been tested for the flu, but it's really a COVID case. And then that, that same ratio is one to seven. So one out of every seven adults has an undetected case of COVID. Um, that is really crazy. Uh, and they basically have identified some of these uh, professors that were a part of this, this research component. Um, they've identified that it's likely that they, the virus had been spreading for several weeks, if not months, here in Seattle and all over the U.S. You know, not all over, but definitely in the areas where we saw that first. Um, so it's very, it's very interesting. Um, but the flu is something that, you know, what the CDC director said, we've got to be careful of this flu season is going to be crazy when we're also dealing with COVID and everybody who might have the flu is going to think they've got COVID. They're for sure are going to be tested as if they're a COVID case. Um, so Lori GD, wow. So why are schools opening so soon if the evidence shows that back in March? That's an excellent question. <laughs> you know, it is, uh, not the smartest um, if you just look at the statistics, but there's so much that's wrapped up in it. It's very much a politically oriented thing. Um, and then one, let's see, I feel like there's one last and final um, story on here. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Let me grab this. 
this is this morning. I'm, I'm now doing a lot of my research later in the evenings. Um, so sometimes I'm printing out more stuff at night and then I have to, I have to remember. Okay. The other thing I want to share with you, this is kind of interesting. We now are seeing, um, where we're starting to get to those levels of the 20 or the 1918 flu pandemic. Um, they've, they've done a comparison of estimated excess deaths in New York city during COVID and the 1918 influenza pandemic. This is the chart that they've identified. So this is the 1918 flu and this is this year. So this, this is 1918 flu and this is the, uh, COVID outbreak. So these are fatalities. So in 1918, the major fatality was H1N1, 1918 Spanish flu. And it's called it, this is interesting. It's called the Spanish flu because the Spanish king caught the flu and he survived. And somehow it got labeled as that. It was not originated in Spain. But this is the fatalities. These uh, in 1918, just at maybe 280,000. And in 2020, in just New York, so just New York. 2020 thus far they've they're at 200,000 so and that you know we still have four months to go um and it is expected that we'll have more fatalities in new york city but i think that's really interesting you know in terms of a lot of the naysayers are like well it's not as bad as the pan the flu pandemic of 1918 and we still have four months to go and we're definitely seeing it's rivaling that for sure Okay, so now it's Q&A time, yay. Okay, so I wanna get out my YouTube questions really fast. Let me go over to, I answer the questions that you guys send to me first, and then I, um, so I'm gonna bounce back and forth between, uh, let me go to my community tab. So I'll go between YouTube uh, questions. I've got eight questions on YouTube and several on Instagram, and then I'll go directly to all of you, okay. Um, where Gina asks on YouTube, how can I naturally re reverse my subclinical hypothyroidism? Okay. So that's a really, you know, it, everybody who deals with, um, who deals with hypothyroidism, there's a lot of different reasons for that. And everybody's body is a little different. So, you know, I don't know your situation, but I will recommend, I actually have several thyroid related healing protocols. They're available digital guides that you can purchase online on my website. If you go to my digital protocols, you can see them I have one for hypothyroidism. I have also one if you just want to generally balance your thyroid and keep it optimized before it goes hypo or hyper. Um, so I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, but generally, there's a lot at play with hypothyroidism. It's hormonal imbalance. It's a degree of inflammation. A lot of time it's diet. The core element is you definitely want to look at and evaluate your stress hormone that will kick off the um, imbalances that overwhelm the thyroid gland. Okay, so on Instagram, questions here. Um, AROE2218 asks, what advice do you have on keeping our kids as healthy as possible during the pandemic? Um, I actually have several videos here in the live show. So those are on my playlist where I really detail those. I'm actually working on a project to focus on kids as well. Um, but I think most important, you want to make sure your children are getting vitamin D levels. You want to have them taking a good multivitamin and you want to have them on some immune support, herbals, maybe a little homeopathy, depending on the age of your child, as well as I think it's important that we introduce stress balancing. And I love this. This is a spray. I'm going to spray it on my tongue. It has <clears throat> alethro, holy basil, ashwagandha, rhodiola, rose flower, and ginger. And it sprays two or three sprays. It's not an overall like er intense herbal. A child can take it. You can, you know, put it in their juice or have, you know, spray it on their tongue, depending on how old they are and their compliance, but daily stress balance. I have links down below for all of you on YouTube. Um, Instagram, I'll post this, but this I really feel is very good for kids because you, one of the things that we have to talk about, and this, you know, the, the uh, CDC MMWR that, uh, morbidity mortality weekly report is highlighting depression, substance abuse, and things like that. Children are greatly imbalanced. Not, children are greatly impacted. And if they have any underlying imbalances, it might be exacerbated, as we've seen in that report. 
Um, and so as a parent, you know, we're doing that with Gabriel and uh, I'd encourage you to check that out. So, but definitely do watch my playlists. Um, and I have a specific pandemic playlist. I think we're at 140 some videos on that. Okay, so back to YouTube question, yarn sniffer. <laughs> I have some supplements to take on an empty stomach between meals, but I often will eat a few walnuts and forget to leave my belly empty. So I guess I'm asking how empty is empty? Um, well, it kind of depends on what you have taken, what, you, what supplement you're taking. Also, you know, walnuts are gonna digest in about 20 to 30 minutes. So, you know, if you're, if you eat in your walnuts and then you wait 15 minutes, you're, that's pretty close to empty. Um, second question, say I have three supplements to take on an empty stomach, like quercetin, BMR complex and Sarisha. Do they need to be separate or can they be taken all together? Um, I don't recall what's in the BMR complex, but the quercetin and Sarisha can be taken together. Sometimes they will be combined in a supplement. Um, I'd have to look at the BMR complex. Um, Okay, so next question, Stephanie and Maurice, 1967. I sent you a question about a ma massager for lipedema. Okay, I'm not quite sure what massager. I have to admit, this week I'm not as punctual and even finding time with Gabriel's back to school and having to be so hands-on um, of answering and seeing my messages. So I apologize. Um, I don't know what question that is, but if you're on the live, let me know. Uh, okay, let me ask, let, go to another Instagram. Uh, man, Mansa Singare, uh, natural remedies for constipation and chronic fissures. Okay, so, you know, the number one uh, hydration, the number one cause of constipation is dehydration. Number two, lack of magnesium. Three, lack of fiber. Address those three, that's a good start. Then if you want to add a little power punch to your liver, dandelion tea. Those are four things that are very impactful. I would do that. Constipation causes fissures. And so if you resolve constipation, meaning you should be having two to three healthy bowel movements a day. And when I say fiber, uh, ideally you want to be at 30, 35 grams of fiber a day. That's a lot. Um, can't see your visual. I don't know what that means. Um, so that is one thing that um, I recommend for that. Um, okay. So next question, Pat, Hey, Pat, our wonderful moderator on YouTube. We love you so much. Um, uh, Pat says, I know what I did. I know what I did when I found a hard lump in a breast, but I want to know what would you do? What do you advise on this? Okay. So that's a great question. I actually have created a healthy breast course. It's called my booby care course, and it has 26 videos to watch. And they also have audio files. Um, and I do, I show and demo DIY, breast care, massage, casserole packing, uh, supplementation. I talk about your breast health, um, what you need to know, things you aren't told by your doctor. Uh, it's very in depth. And so um, what I would do if I found anything, and I, I, you know, since I had Gabriel, I've noticed a fibroid. I mean, I've been very descriptive with you guys. It's one of the reasons why I did infrared or not infrared. I did um, a thermography where I did a scan and um, it, nothing showed up. That was crazy. I will say the, the leg, the vein issue that showed up um, on the full body thermography. But what I would do is I would implement what I ordinarily do. I implement everything that I recommend. Um, so I'm totally transparent in that course. Um, the course, there's a hundred dollar coupon for all of you. It is extremely invaluable. It's something you have, you have lifetime membership in the course. I'm adding modules. Uh, as soon as I get more time on my schedule, I want to add some modules to some new research that's come out, um, about breast cancer and breast health. Um, and, um, the other thing that, um, I would do is first don't freak out. Uh, you know, 90% of the masses women feel in their breast tissue are not going to be cancerous. And, you know, the answer for cancer, the answer to cancer, this docu-series, sign up for that too. Um, because there's just so much that we can control about cancer. And, and the one thing we need to know is cancer just doesn't pop up overnight. It is a slow eight to 10 year, sometimes 20 year acceleration, you know, process of, of, uh, cellular changes and we have power to control that. So, um, you know, first I would not freak out. I take a breath and, and, and 
do all the things that I'd recommend. Um, would I do a mammogram? No, I don't plan on doing any mammograms. Um, but I would do thermography. I do it, you know, more frequently, maybe every three months, do the work that I recommend in the course. Um, and also change whatever lifestyle and mental uh, health, the language I talk to myself, I would change that to support healthy breast tissue. And that is really critical. There's a mind body connection. We have a lot more power with our thoughts than we realize. Okay, so Junie717 says, what are your thoughts on HCTZ for high blood pressure? I'm scared to take blood pressure medicines. I understand. Um, you know, this is something that is a natural occurrence in my family and it's a real pain in the butt. <laughs> um, what I would do is I would identify what are the sources of high blood pressure. A lot of times for folks, they can easily lower those by addressing stress, sleeping better, eating better, exercising, and employing meditative activities. Um, you know, there are an, an enormous amount of blood pressure medicines. Sometimes we have beta blockers. Um, others, we're, you know, removing excess fluid. There's potassium imbalances that are being addressed. Um, it really depends on what the source is. I think it is critical that you do do some clinical analysis where you have the doctors run more deep, um, more uh, deeper level analysis of what's at play with the blood pressure. You know, is there a renal artery blockage? Um, you know, for folks that have different, uh, you know, it's only common for a cancer. And I'm not saying that anybody has cancer, but it's only common for there to be like a cyst or a tumor that might be pressing on the kidneys. Some people don't even realize that they only have one functional kidney. So those are things, uh, you know, ultrasounds can be helpful. Sometimes CT scans can, can give us a better scope, but there's definitely a lot of serum blood related tests that you can run that gives you a better idea. Definitely at the beginning of that, evaluate your adrenal glands because the fight or flight system is regulatory of the blood pressure. Um, and then also that vagus vein uh, the, or the vagus nerve, you'd want to really hone in on this right side, massaging the right side, right carotid artery. Watch that video from yesterday. Okay, Taryn, I was wondering what can I do or take? I noticed the past several weeks, I have a twitch in my left eye. It comes and goes. And I noticed that my left thigh on the outer side feels like something is crawling that comes and goes also. And you mentioned nervous system. Do not take any prescription meds, only natural herbs when needed. So one of the things that can be common with twitching eyes and sometimes weird skin feeling, sometimes thyroid imbalances can cause that. Actually, I have a video about 20 uncommon uh, symptoms of thyroid imbalance. It's one of, one of the earlier videos I posted, and it was super popular. So I'd watch that, Taryn, and see if there are other things that are synonymous and definitely do evaluate your thyroid. Okay, uh, let's see. Angel Med Center just wanted to support smiley face. Oh, thank you. Uh, Lori GD says, can a form of Moringa replace a bunch of supplements? Depends on what you're taking. Um, I am, I like to take a little bit of everything. I like a food oriented supplement. I take herbs. I take teas. I drink a lot of teas. I take, you know, homeopathics. I don't have any, do I have any of my homeopathics? This isn't one I'm taking, but it just happens to be on my desk. Um, but I do take herbs um, and probiotics. You know, I take my homeopathic pellets. Kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, is there one single end-all be-all miracle pill? Moringa definitely comes close to it, but depending on, you know, what all you're seeking to balance, it might not do everything you need. Um, but I, lo I love Moringa. Okay, um, let's see, Kim Halbert, is there a healthy substitute for taking Lasix or a better way? Oh yes, so Lasix. Okay, so anybody who's unfamiliar with Lasix, Lasix is a medication that is meant to get water weight off of you. It is meant to, it's a diuretic. It's often prescribed for people who have chronic, um, um, actually congestive heart failure, people who also have lymphedema or lipolymphedema. Um, Lasix doesn't, does not help your lymphatics and it actually causes dehydration of the lymphatics. You need that fluid. So the best way to get fluid moving 
is to motivate your lymphatic system. And I have 50 videos on that. Lots of great content, dry skin brushing, homeopathy, like lymph stem. That is my number one seller. I have all of my lymphatic patients taking lymph stem because it moves the lymphatic. So if you are sluggish, you've got, you know, tender lymph nodes, lymph stem is very promotive of that. But if also you're holding a lot of fluid, you have edema, swelling of your legs, your feet, that will be impactful. And by the way, we are going to be working on a project where I have a little bit of an easier access for all of you to buy uh, some of the compression wear online. So I'm working on that. Mm. And I have some of our latest new uh, fall colors coming. I'm so excited. I'm going to be wearing uh, those tights very frequently. Although my vein isn't bothering me right now. It ebbs and flows, but I do do a lot of work on it. Um, but yeah, so Kim, I hope that's helpful um, for your uh, mom. I would I would do a lot of lymphatic exercises. And at 81, if she's in the bed, you know, have her do, there's one video where she might not be able to put her legs above her head, but there's a video where you can move your legs and it's motivational. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mango Mia, how do you clean, sanitize your groceries before storing in pantry and fridge? I actually have a video on that. I did that, I think, in March. Um, I use my force of nature. They have an August coupon code. I'm not sure if it's up, but I'll make sure I post it. But force of nature is awesome. Um, the It's electrolyzer, little unit. You get these little salt and vinegar uh, packs that you add to water and hit a button and it changes. It literally electrolyzes it. So it changes around the atoms of vinegar and salt and water, and it makes a very potent but toxic-free uh, antiviral, antimicrobial, and the, it's EPA approved. It's amazing. So we do that. We clean uh, our groceries. I do that routinely. Um, I also clean. I also clean what goes in the freezer. Um, despite you know we didn't have any data. Still, we're learning a little bit about frozen items. I, I, I clean the outside. Now, as far as the inside um, of the packages, you know, we're going to heat most of our stuff. And so I heat it thoroughly. Um, and as far as fruits and vegetables, I use an organic veggie wash. I'll make sure that I post that. I'm going to write veggie wash. Um, and now I am starting to collect. We're eating from the garden. I'm starting to collect and I'm freezing like my dinosaur kale basil. I'm going to make a whole bunch of pesto out of the basil. I swear. I just keep basil. I'm going to end up weighing it. Um, and also my figs. So I clean those thoroughly, you know, my harder, um, like we get avocado still. I don't have, we don't grow avocado here, but I get avocado. I just clean with force of nature on the outside. Um, and again, with a harder kind of outside shell, just clean it with a force of nature and then you're good to go. Um, okay. So let's see. Next question. Emily. Hey, Emily. She says, I've been wanting to naturally balance my hormones. I have PCOS and hypothyroidism. I had a bunch of tests ran recently, some of which included my hormone levels. The problem is that I was told that those levels are all normal. Of course you have, because <laughs> the normal range is like you versus a 250 pound man is considered normal. So I totally understand that. The fact that I have to shave my face every day tells me something is off, but I'm no expert. Can you take a look at these numbers and give me your opinion if they seem appropriately imbalanced? Okay, so I'm not going to read all your numbers here. And that is a more thorough in-depth uh, appointment requirement for me to go into that. Um, and right now I'm not taking any appointments. I just, it, this COVID getting back on schedule, I, I, I'm not operating like I used to. So unfortunately I can't dig into those, but um, you know, the big thing that um, I don't see on here is that they evaluated it doesn't look like they broke down all of your uh, um, estrogen. So we have three types of estrogen. One of the really critical things when women are dealing with PCOS, we want to really get deeper. So you want to have your adrenal uh, values, uh, adrenal uh, test run. So you want cortisol and you want DHEA. Um, she's got some of the other numbers on here, but I would definitely also want to have a full panel of your thyroid gland. So, um, and maybe they've run that, but definitely this is not the, that this doesn't give you a bigger snapshot. Um, and so Emily email me, um, and I can make some recommendations in terms of some additional testing. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I'm a Mordini. 
asks, what are the possible causes of an inconclusive COVID test? Okay, so one, um, depending on the test, could be it's, you know, lack of accuracy. Two, inconclusive, if you did the nasal pharynx, not, it has to go all the way back and they have to kind of swab. They literally have to swab the back of your nose and it has to kind of be a scrape. Not everybody, you know, so if somebody like if you go in and somebody leans back, you're not going to get it. So this, again, is one of these things where like these tests, the accuracy levels, it could be a medical provider error. It could be a consumer. You you lean back. Um, it could be the, the test itself. It could be how it was handled. It could be, um, you know, there's so many different things that we have saliva. We have the nasal pharynx. And then we have um, there there's antibodies and that's now like that's not even being really um, attributed as anything that's considerably accurate and to be measured as positive tests. Um, so it could be a number of things. Um, what I what I recommend um, the PCR test is going to be what you want to run. And if you didn't have that run and a lot of people don't like I have had, I can't tell you how many people, it's more than a dozen who have messaged me and said, you know, I've taken two tests, they're both negative. And I said, well, okay, well, what kind of test did you take? I don't know. So first find out what lab, you know, who, what, what lab ran that? Um, because some labs are not as accurate as others. Um, and also the methodology. Okay. So Katessa77 asks, what helps a blocked fallopian tube? Okay, so number one, why is it blocked? Um, it could very well be structural mechanical. It could be from endometriosis. It could be from scarring. It could be from, um, you know, maybe some adhesions and that's their scarring and then there's adhesions, it kind of depends. Um, but I will tell you, Sarisha, um, and I sell that in my full script store, it's S-E-R-R-E-T-I-A. Um, and I'll make sure I post a link. Sarisha is awesome for it's a proteolytic enzyme. It will di it'll help digest the, the thick bonds, protein bonds of scar tissue. Um, so there are sometimes women who have PCOS or even just single cysts can have those rupture. It can damage a fallopian tube. Um, it's not uncommon for women to have an evaluation. They do a dye test. They see where it's blocked. Um, so sometimes, you know, a little bit more about your fallopian tube blockage. Um, but I love castor oil packs. It is, it's, it's so cheap. It's so non-invasive. Um, I love Sarisha castor oil packs. And then there's some other things that you can do just supporting your hormone uh, structure and hormone balance. Um, there are some really good supplements um, that we actually sell in full script that, um, let me see, I can't remember the name of the one, but it is very much honed in on supporting ovarian health. And, you know, there's a strong connection between the ovaries and the, the uh, fallopian tubes. Okay, so let's see. Yarn sniffer, what all does NAC help and how does it help lymphedema? So NAC is an anti-inflammatory. Um, if lymphedema is also accompanied, you know, so you have a diagnosis of lymphedema, you most also might have autoimmunity um, or mast cell disease. Um, it can help lower the inflammation levels. And so NAC is a very high antioxidant. And there's a lot of things that antioxidants do in the body. Part of it is reducing the inflammation. Inflammation by nature has excess fluid accumulation in the body. So that's one of the things that it helps. It is not my number one go to for lymphedema. So yarn sniffer, lymph stim, the homeopathic that we sell in full scripts might go to that's going to be more impactful. Okay, so Lori GD says, can Hashimoto's ever go away? Yes, I put people in Hashimoto's remission all the time, all the time. And I actually have a Hashimoto's protocol if you want to check that out. Um, Lori GD asks, what are the top five supplements we should all take daily? Ugh, multivitamin, multimineral. Um, I would take the C bubble BD, lots of good, D, you know, lots of good data on that. Um, something for your adrenals to support your stress, like holy basil, rhodiola, like the daily stress balance. Um, and now in COVID time, more importantly, you want to have additional vitamin D three 
So that's one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one would be something that would support your gut. So some sort of probiotic. I actually have just in front of me here, uh, like an oral probio, oral probiotics. There's a ton of those, but that helps the heart. It helps the um, gun tissue. It helps support your oral microbiota, especially now, most importantly in COVID, supporting your oral microbiota may actually help us uh, manage a COVID outbreak. Um, and, and is very good for folks that have dental imbalances. You know, there's dental caries, i.e. cavities, or gingivitis, gum disease. Um, I love oral probiotics. Also for folks who have sinusitis and sinus infections. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go to your questions. Sorry, that was a lot. Okay. Um, okay. Birdhouse Barbie, read labels, hydrate fruit. Yes. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. Picture is fine. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So Instagram, what is bubble BD? Oh, uh, C and then bumblebee B D. Okay. So those three are those three letters. Okay. Those, I can't say those I get dinged on YouTube. So <laughs> there's censorship when it comes to that. That is an herbal botanical uh, from the hemp plant. It is the oil and it's highly beneficial. So YouTube, you guys have a link, the uh, C Bumblebee D that is down below. Uh, okay, and Pat's husband, Ron was like, just have her say Bumblebee and it's been brilliant. I have had no dings. So thanks to Ron, he's awesome. Okay, so let me see. I've got questions from all of you. Okay, Stephanie Foskey. Mom, mammogram yesterday, they made me so nervous with the exposure. I did ask about thermography, but no one near my town does this. We'll definitely travel for it. Oh yeah, Mam um, thermography is great. This is one thing. If you do a mammogram, always ask for them to give you the thyroid protection. There's like this little thyroid kind of, it, it literally is like this little neck kind of thing. It's Velcro on the back and it's a neck shield. They mammogram so many women and expose the thyroid to radiation. And it's definitely part of that mix of like, you know, these regular screenings that definitely puts a challenge in the world of thyroid. You know, our thyroid is a really precious critical gland and it just plagues so many women. And I will tell you, you can go up and down. I've had that experience. I had crazy off the charts, T4, reverse T3, whacked out. Thyroid was completely under way, way too much stress and it was liver oriented. And so, you know, there's a lot of emotions in the liver. Liver is the root of anger, frustration. I was in a really bad, unhealthy relationship. It was really angry. <laughs> so once I got that toxicity out of the body, cleansed the liver, did supplementation to support the liver, it balanced out. So just know the current state you might find yourself in that's an, an imbalance in the current state of imbalance is not permanent. We get often sold this bill that your imbalance is permanent. It's your lifelong diagnosis. It's your lifelong diagnosis code. It's who you are. You are a thyroid, you know, hypothyroid patient. That is, that is not valid. And we go through cycles and our body go through, goes through cycles. And if you think of like when you throw a stone in a lake, there's a ripple effect, that ripple effect, there's multiple systems that get impacted. But over time, things level out again, there might be a new ripple, if you've got lots of ripples going on, we've got to reduce those stones. And so um, that's my message for you all on, on that. Okay, so um, hey, buddy. Uh, let's see. Love sending super chats. Wish I could super chat. Oh, don't worry. Futuristic. Thank you so much. Julie, I have a po uterine polyp and I'm castor oil packing every day. How long would it take for me to get rid of it? Depends on how big. And also um, critical aspect with your uterus is to really balance and hone in on your thyroid. So I definitely grab the general thyroid protocol. You're going to get good tips on how the, there's a, a direct correlation between your thyroid and your uterus with regard to iodine receptors and uterus. So there's a big co correlation as well as the liver function too. Um, what is the parathyroid's role in general health? So it's a helper 
um, gland. It does some of the metabolic regulation. People can have their thyroids removed and the para the parathyroid glands still help support thyroid functionality. So a lot of people are like, my thyroid's gone, it's dead, but you still have your parathyroid. So they're little, they're little offshoots of the thyroid. Um, let's see, Lorraine from Miami, having problems with having to constantly clear my throat. Doctor said I'm fine, but it's constantly, it constantly feels flummy. Yuck, please help. Gargle. Um, I would add an x -Lear or some sort of nasal saline spray. More than likely you're getting post-nasal drainage. It's causing mucosal irritation. I would also add an oral probio or oral probiotic that can help clear up um, and evaluate what mucus producing foods you're eating, cut dairy and gluten. There might be some food sensitivities and, or you might also be getting acid reflux, but something that phlegm is indication of inflammation and maybe some irritant you know, pathogen that's causing irritation. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm not sure what Steph 23 is asking. Um, Donna, local farmer's markets gal makes a holy basil with touch of honey. Ooh, homemade kombucha. That's nice. Um, futuristic sounds weird saying it out loud, but Dr. Mills actually helped with my annoying excessive earwax problem. That's why I, when I subbed, yay. Yeah, my ear videos are really popular. Um, what's the best way to evaluate iodine in the body? Get it tested. You can test for your iodine levels. Um, let's see. Vicki says years ago, my son or Christine says years ago, my son was having a terrible problem with that and the doc had him drink hot tea with a lemon squeezed in it. Yeah, lemon's great. Lots of vitamin C. Um, Dwayne, my pharmacist friend, is going to put her high school daughter on zinc and quercetin before school starts as a preventative for COVID. Is that a good thing? Um, so zinc for sure. We have links that zinc is very good as a, a, a bolster uh, enhancer to your. Um, the immune system, I would, we've got Gabriel and vitamin D. I have him on a whole bunch of stuff. Like he's not exposed to kids at school, but we do have a one-on-one -on -one learning coach who's helping him, uh, helping us get two hours Monday through Thursday where she comes in. So, you know, I've got my UV lights going out of my aromatherapy. He's taking all of the supplements. Um, also omegas and their anti-inflammatories, uh, but definitely vitamin D would be the thing I would add to that. And your pharmacist would have all the data. It's pretty, pretty substantial, the amount of research we already have on the moderate to high severe cases um, that they tend to be low D. Um, stop tonsil stones. Okay, so that's actually interesting. I should do a video on that um, because we have a lot of people who ask that. So stay tuned. I'll do a video on that probably in the next month. Um, Oh my gosh, Karen Hollis. I asked my doctor about testing for iodine and he said in US, no one has a deficiency of iodine. Ugh, eye roll, that is so ridiculous. That is so not true. Um, Lori, you can test iodine. V Honestly, the most accurate is a dried urine analysis. That's how we run our tests, um, but crazy. Uh, Karen, after shrinking fibroids, can you shrink the uterus back to regular size? Yeah, so the fibroids cause all sorts of inflammation. Um, you know, the uterus is, um, you know, you want to give your uterus three to four months. That's kind of the cellular turnover of a uterus. So there's a lot you can do to enhance the uterus um, uh, functionality. Some of it, we have thickening of the, in, you know, uh, uterine lining um, that's hormonally driven that, um, and th then the other thing too, that nobody really talks about, gosh, for sure. I've never had an OBGYN talk about this. And I have had a few cases in my history where I've had cyst rupture, you know, they hurt like a, you know what, and you know, on an ultrasound, it's just like, you can't even visualize the ovary cause there's just fluid. Nobody has even talked about lymphatic health of the uterus and the ovaries. And that's like another video topic. Let me write this down. Sometimes I get really good video ideas. Um, so supporting your lymphatics also will help detox those organs, all of them. Okay, so Instagram, you've got 30 seconds. I'm going to continue taking questions for five more minutes and then I've got to go do mommy duty upstairs. 
I literally am in a PK or junior K class. Um, Dutch test. It, yes, I've heard of Dutch test. Um, there's a multitude of different test providers. They're one of them. They have an assortment of really good tests. Okay. So uh, join us on Instagram or YouTube. Thanks, Instagram. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, YouTube. Let me just download this. Let me share it. And um, okay, so Dr. Melissa. So Donna, hey, Donna, should I eat one seaweed snack serving a day? Yes, seaweed, seaweed flakes, you know, the um, kelp flakes. I love those. Um, the other thing that I would do is yes, uh, seaweed, uh, those little flakes. They are actually this. I'm so excited. Having lived in Japan, I used to have to go to an import store to get like those seaweed flakes and stuff. And now it's so readily accessible. Trader Joe's even sells them. They sell them for kids. It's one thing I haven't been able to get Gabriel on, but I'm going to work on it. Um, Trisha, how can you reduce inflammation? That's a, such a big question. I have a whole playlist for you on that food for inflammation, um, activities that you can do to lower your inflammation level. But inflammation is the root of all illness. And so we have to get a handle of it. Um, my favorite supplement that I recommend in my full script store is called Inflame X. So there's a link down below where you can go and full on full script. Full script is a medical online store and you set up an account, a patient account. It's HIPAA. Um, it's HIPAA credentialed or whatever the term is, a tech term, but um, your patient account is private and it, you know, we adhere to the HIPAA policies um, and that's why you have to create your name and your email. Um, just word of the wise, don't create a fake name because it's going to mail you your products if you buy them with the name you create. So make sure you, you give that, that name appropriately. And, you know, because of that, you're, it's not a list that gets sold or anything like that, but you have to create a patient list. And like the back end of it, when I was seeing patients in person or virtually, um, I script my patients. So I would send you, like if we talk about inflammation, like we talk about Inflamex and some other stuff, I'd send you an email and then I'd put in like two or three of my recommendations from full script with the dosing. So it's literally a scripting site. And the, the end, the other side that you see is a store, but it's a professional medical um, website. And because of it, it's HIPAA certified. Um, I get a lot of flack. Why do you need my email? And so that's why you set up a patient account. Um, my mom has gallstones. Should I, should she take bile salt? Yes. Gallstones, bile salt, if she's open to it, highly effective would be an enema, a coffee enema, or really intense is that gallstone cleansing, grapefruit juice, salt water. I mean, that'll, <laughs> It, it, it's literally this whole process, process where um, you do three or four steps as a period of hours, and it literally causes this force where if there are any stones in the, the bladder, and so it's this reservoir, the gallbladder is a reservoir, and it, that's where we get a lot of fatty tissue, or not fatty tissue, but fat buildup. Um, it will literally force it. It's this amazing force flushing, and you're relying on your on your right side so that you get the gravitational force with it. Pretty amazing. Darlene, yay, great info, thank you. Um, yay, Jenny got her order of Inflamex. It's so fantastic. Um, and I have noticed um, that, by the way, uh, USPS is really slow. And the good news is that Fullscript does not ship via U uh, USPS. I think they ship via UPS two days. So if you order uh, $50 or more free shipping, um, and it's usually two days to you. Very, very easy. We have two warehouses. Um, and I also have somebody I work with closely because of my video content where I will say, Oh, this video, I'm going to talk about X, Y, and Z. And I've got links to all these products. And then the buyers who are making sure the shelves are stocked with everything you need have the right ordering so that we don't run out. And we actually, some videos will, will drain the, the, the shelves because so many want them. And like the most popular video was Sunday's video, the hair loss video, where I talk about the homeopathics, literally Sunday, two of them were in, on back order Monday, more product came in. 
then we sold more and then we had a little back order by Tuesday, we're back up and loaded. So they're really good. I work with them to make sure we have the right quantities. Um, there, you know, with COVID, there were some manufacturers that have had some delays, um, because of where they get some of their product, but it's amazing. Uh, okay. One more question. Uh, Kim, what is the best way our kit to purchase to monitor cholesterol at home? That's a good question. I, I don't know. I wish that there were an easy way to do that. Um, but I will tell you, if you want to lower your cholesterol, uh, lower your inflammation levels, number one, two, red yeast rice, three, do liver detoxing, dandelion milk thistle. Fantastic. That is an excellent way to address cholesterol. So with that, I'll end our, our live show today. Mommy duty calls, check out my Instagram. I'm going to try and post. Um, we, I've totally forgot to take Gabriel's first day photo on Wednesday. So I need to dress up in his uniform again. And we filled out the sign. We just get a chance to take the photo. So I'll post that to Instagram. He's so darn adorable. And uh, you'll see what he wants to be when he grows up. He uh, was a question that's on the thing. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, tomorrow tune in live. I will have another live show. We'll be talking about some topic probably related to more research that's coming out. And I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in and being a part of our show, your support. I'm utterly grateful for, and you guys definitely are such a fantastic community. So stay well, be safe. Let's thank Pat and Ron, our wonderful moderators. She is sometimes blocking out some of the crazies and the really intense comments that come our way. Uh, but I am really, really grateful. So thank you, Pat and Ron. And I hope all of you have a great Friday. TGIF. Yay. See you guys later tomorrow. Bye.